Some guys struggle to build up the confidence to approach women. So thankfully there are places where women actually approach men first. And I'll list those places off, those situations in this video. And in a couple of them, I'll also give you examples of what to say so you can create a spark of attraction with her. If you're then able to keep the conversation going, you will often get a phone number in many of these cases. And in some of these cases, you'll get a kiss and possibly even sex that night. So let's begin with number one. Sample girls. These are the women that you'll see in a supermarket, at a shopping mall, at a festival, and at a food expo. What some guys don't realize is that most of these women are just doing that as a casual job or an in-between job. They're not successful in life. They're in-between jobs, or in some cases, the woman is trying to make it as a model, so she's doing odd jobs here and there, and she's not at a high level of success in life or anything like that. But some guys look at sample girls and they feel intimidated by them. They think, oh, this girl has some authority here. She's giving out the sample. She's somebody and so forth. And the guy feels intimidated. So what you need to do in a situation like this is something that I call transaction interaction. Almost everyone that gets a sample will just have a transaction with her where they're walking along and she says, oh, would you like to try one of these samples? And for example, the guy says, oh, okay, yep, thank you. And he gets his sample and he walks off, right? He's just had a transaction with her. It's a forgettable experience for her, right? It's just a transaction. But if you stop and have an interaction with her where you make her feel attracted and you let her see that you're looking at her as a real human being, not just a robot who's giving out samples, then an energy comes alive between you and her. And if you know how to make her feel attracted, you can keep the conversation going and even get her phone number. So rather than just walking up and having a transaction with her where you say, oh yeah, I'll get one of those, thank you, and walk off thinking, gee, that girl was pretty. I wish I could get a girl like that have an interaction with her and make her feel attracted. She says to you, would you like to try one of these samples? And you say something like this, hey, so what are you giving out here? And she tells you what she's giving out or talks about the product. And how many of them have you eaten today? She might then tell you that she hasn't eaten any or she might say that she's sampled a few here and there. And if she has had a few while she's been giving out samples, you can say something like this. Well, that's cool. It's probably the only job that you can eat on the job and not get fired. Pretty cool. It sounds like a cruisy job. I'll grab one of these. So uh, how long have you been doing this? And she then tells you how long she's been working as a sample girl or a promo girl and so on. And you're being a confident, charming type of guy using a bit of humor here and there. And she's going to be feeling sparks of attraction for you. If you can then keep the conversation going and attract her more. And if she's single, you're almost certainly going to get a phone number. Now, another example is where you say something a little bit more daring, where she asks you if you'd like a free sample and you say something like this. Hmm, those look horrible. What are you giving out to people? She knows that you're only playfully messing with her there, right? You're joking with her. And she will then tell you what she's giving out and you can say something like this. All right, well look, I'll give it a try. Actually, that's really good. I'll take the tray and you go get another tray. Suddenly you and her are laughing together, right? You're having an energized interaction and you're treating her like a real human being. She can then stop putting on the act of just being this sample girl that says, oh, would you like to try a sample? Okay, thank you, have a nice day, and so on. She can joke back and forth with you now because you're actually treating her like a real human being. Number two, singles events. So I'm not talking about speed dating events here where you go up to the woman's table and start the interaction with her. It's a single events where you have a name tag on. And what I found when I gave those single events a try is that it's different to bars and clubs where women often act like they're not there to meet a guy. They'll say, oh, I'm just here to have a good time. I'm just here to dance. Right? I'm just here to hang out with my friends. But in reality, she's hoping to meet a guy. But she can put on that act in a bar or club because it's feasible. She could just be there to dance. Right? But at a singles event, she can't really act like she's there just to dance or whatever. Right? She's there to hopefully meet a guy. Right? So what happens is that women then feel more willing to start a conversation with a guy. So what you'll find is that, say for example, your name is Mike and you have your name tag on, you'll find that sometimes a woman will say, oh, hi, Mike, how are you? And she's just working her way through the room, being social and opening herself up to opportunities. The thing is, women at singles events usually aren't super attractive, but there are some nice diamonds in the rough, right? You'll find some women who are very pretty, but it's often a good thing for guys who are starting out and want to develop their skills of being able to interact with women and make them feel attracted, right? You're in a situation where the women there are single. So you're not doing anything wrong by going over and saying hello if you want to approach. 
That said, at singles events where you're wearing a name tag, what you'll find is that you'll sometimes get approached. Number three, dance classes. So these are dance classes where you need to have a partner like salsa or ballroom dancing. And what happens is that once again, there's no real need for the woman to act like she's just there to hang out with her friends or anything like that. She's there to dance. So what happens is that women are much more likely to come up to you and say, would you like to dance? and pick you as a dance partner or to walk up and talk about the dance class or just to try to fit in with the crowd there. Men's clothing stores. So if you walk into a men's clothing store with a female salesperson, she'll usually come and approach you. And most guys assume that she's being hit on all day every day by guys, so they don't actually attempt to flirt with her. They also assume that she must have a boyfriend, not realizing that most new relationships just don't work and many women come back into the singles dating market all the time hoping to find a real boyfriend, a guy that they could actually have a relationship with and potentially marry. So if you walk into a men's clothing store and the woman approaches you, there's nothing wrong with lightly flirting with her and giving it a go, right? She started the conversation with you, you can then make her feel attracted and if she's single, you can get her phone number. Speed dating events. So this is before the speed dating event begins, right? Once it begins, the guy has to go up and approach the woman at her table. But beforehand, what I found when I tried out speed dating is that I was standing around with, you know, two or three guys that I didn't know, but I just started talking to. And some women came up and started talking to us, right? So they started the conversation first. A woman's motivation for doing that is to see if there's any guy there that she experiences a bit of a spark or connection with before she actually gets to the tables. Some women do that because they're tired of being single and they're trying to maximize their opportunity to find a guy on the night. Hostels. So one time I went to Spain and decided to stay in a hostel. And what I found is that women would come up and talk to me in situations like that. Now, I wasn't attracted to the women at the hostel, but they were coming up and talking to me and we're having a good time. We went to the beach and so forth. We had a good time hanging out. And at some point we went on a picnic together with one of the girls who had approached me first in the hostel. I wasn't attracted to her, but it was interesting to see that not only had she approached me first, but she was willing to continue to pursue when we went to different activities together, like going on a picnic or going out to eat and so forth. And the reason why it happens is that most women who are on a holiday and go to a hostel want to meet guys, right? They want to have a good time on their holiday by having a fling, having a hookup or something like that. They don't wanna just keep to themselves and be in a hostel full of people and ignore everyone. Sometimes a person will do that in a hostel, but in most cases, both men and women are very proactive socially in hostels and they want to form connections, make instant friendships so they can go out and party together, so they can go and do things together while on holiday. Flight attendants. So a lot of guys assume that an air hostess must be taken because she looks pretty and she's interacting with guys the entire flight on many flights all day, so guys must be hitting on her left, right, and center. Now, while it's true that she does get flirted with, the reality is that air hostesses or flight attendants rarely get asked for their phone number. Most men assume that she wouldn't want anything to do with them because he's going to a different location, right? She's going that way, he's going this way. But the reality is that flight attendants are often very lonely and they find it difficult to find a boyfriend. So when you're interacting with a flight attendant, don't be afraid to start flirting with her and continue that flirting every time she comes and approaches you. And if you have the confidence to then go and talk to her in the area that they all hang out, or if you wanna press the flight attendant button and get her to come to you, then you can flirt with her a little bit more and get her number. Try to think about the lifestyle that she's living, right? She is flying everywhere all the time and it's hard for a woman like that to get herself a boyfriend because the boyfriend is worried about her hooking up with guys when she's going to this place or that place because what happens is that they often fly to another state or another country and they stay there for two or three nights in some cases. Many guys struggle to trust a woman like that and she then ends up being lonely. She ends up finding it difficult to get herself a boyfriend. So if you're the sort of guy who can trust her and know that she's really gonna get asked out anyway, you've got yourself a chance there. Business networking events. So women who attend business networking events will sometimes approach men so they can make business connections to help them build or improve their business. Strip clubs. So a stripper will usually approach to flirt with you and hopefully get you to pay for a dance. 
Now strippers are a little bit different than flight attendants for example because most guys who have a chance to interact with her want to ask her out and end up saying things like, oh, you know, why do you do this? You're so beautiful. Like, why don't you have a boyfriend or a husband? Or, uh, you know, I could take care of you. Or would you like to go out sometime? I'd take you out to dinner. I'll take you on a holiday and so forth. A lot of guys get very excited when they're interacting with a stripper. So with strippers, you actually have to have a high level of skill to be able to attract them and pick them up. Because what happens is that bad boys often go into strip clubs as well. And they've usually got good game, right? So when you're interacting with a stripper, it's not enough to just attract her lightly and create a bit of a connection with her, right? Many guys can do that. You need to have deep confidence where she can sense that you're not intimidated by her at all. You're not desperate for her. You're not hoping and trying to get a chance. You're just a man who she feels attracted to because you're confident, masculine, charming, and so forth. And you're not hoping that she's gonna give you a chance outside the club. What you'll find then is she then starts trying to flirt with you more to get you to feel excited and start asking her out and so forth. But when you don't do that, she then turns on her charms even more and tries harder. And in the process of doing that, she likes you even more. The next one, dog parks. So this can happen when a woman walks by you in a dog park and starts an interaction by saying hello. Or if her dog approaches your dog and then she starts talking to you as a result. Waitresses. This is another example where guys assume that the waitress must be getting hit on all the time so he shouldn't flirt with her because she must be so tired of it, right? But the reality is that most guys don't know how to flirt and they'll say something like, oh, well, I'll get a burger and your phone number, thanks. I'll get the best looking thing on the menu, which is you. She's heard those sort of cheesy lines all the time. Yet the reality is that if you're very confident and you have deep confidence that comes through in your body language and she can sense that, she can sense your deep masculinity as well, then you can actually say cheesy lines and still pick her up. But for most guys who don't have that deep confidence and they still have that fear around women, they still feel intimidated, they feel unworthy and so forth, using cheesy lines just isn't gonna work. So if a waitress approaches you and says something like, hi, what can I get you today? You can slow things down and show some confidence and flirt with her by saying something like this. Well, Hello, how are you? The woman then knows that you're flirting with her, right? Flirting is an indirect type of language where you show interest in the woman and you attract her, but you're not doing it in a serious way where you say something like, oh, hi, <laughs> you're very beautiful. That's a completely different experience for the woman, right? She is being told that she's beautiful by a guy who is a bit nervous and intimidated by her and that's not gonna be mutually attractive, right? If you're being confident and present in the moment, then she's gonna feel sparks of attraction for you and therefore when you give her a compliment, it's gonna be welcomed. She's gonna feel excited about it. She's gonna feel flattered because it's coming from a guy that she's feeling attracted to in the moment. Yet if she's getting a compliment from a guy that she's not feeling attracted to in the moment, who says something nervous like, oh, hi, <laughs> you're very beautiful. Then it's not mutual attraction, right? There's no spark between him and her, right? He's feeling attracted to her, but she's not feeling it. Now, another example of slowing things down and saying something to her before giving your order is to say something like this. Hey, how you doing? Well, before I decide to order, I'm Dan, what's your name? She then sees you as a confident, easygoing guy, which is gonna make her feel sparks of attraction for you, and you then have an opportunity to continue the conversation a bit, make her feel more attracted, give her your order, then flirt with her a little bit more when she brings over the order, and get her phone number. Alternatively, if a guy doesn't have the guts to be flirting with a woman in that way, he can say something like this instead. Well, I'm feeling adventurous today. Do you have any recommendations? And therefore, it's a bit more of an interaction rather than just a transaction where she says, hi, what can I get you today? And the guy then says, oh, I'll get a burger and fries, thanks, and a Coke. And it's just a forgettable transaction where the guy is treating her as a customer service woman, right? She's a waitress, and that's all he sees her as. But if a guy looks at her as more of a human being and can be bothered actually saying something to her, then it becomes more of an interaction. It becomes more personal. And another example, which isn't really flirting much at all, it's just more confidence and presence and having the ability to chat with her a little bit, is to say something like, hey, how are you today? Then she most likely says, good thanks, and you? Me, I'm starving, so let's see what we got here on the menu. And essentially, you're having a bit more of an interaction with her, you're getting a conversation going, and if she's a bit chatty and she starts talking with you, then you have an opportunity to make her feel attracted. Open mic nights. So if a guy gets up and reads some poetry, says some jokes, or plays some music, 
and seems confident and interesting, women will often then approach him afterwards. Next, local charities or volunteering events. In these settings, women can often feel motivated to approach and talk to people who share their passion for a particular cause or organization. Group exercise classes. So a woman will often approach to discuss fitness, to socialize, to fit in, or to flirt. Hotel maids. She knocks on the door or rings the doorbell and you then have an opportunity to create a spark with her without having had to approach her first in the outside world, for example, at a bar. Travel groups. So this is where you sign up for something where you travel as a group somewhere. And there are always those sorts of things going on, whether it's traveling internationally, interstate, or even within your own state. Right, and when a woman is in a situation where she's in a travel group, she'll often be a lot more proactive socially and she'll try to initiate conversations to get along with people and to fit in. So when in a situation like that, you just need to make sure that you know how to make her feel attracted, keep the conversation going and eventually get to a kiss. Meetup groups. This is via meetup.com. By the way, they're not sponsoring this video or anything like that. I don't do that on this channel, no sponsors. But all you gotta do is go to that website and on the homepage, it'll recognize your location and there'll be meetup groups uh, that are suggested to you or you can go in and search and find something. Essentially what happens though is that a lot of women want to fit in and they're more willing to approach a man and talk to him because you have a similar interest or the same interest, right? You're there to meet up about the same sort of thing. So you'll find that women are a lot more proactive socially. Cooking or culinary classes. A woman will often feel comfortable approaching a man who shares her passion for food, her desire to learn, or just so she fits in or has a good time at the cooking or culinary class. Board game nights. Sometimes women will approach men at game nights like that to socialize or to play games together. Now before I give you the final one on the list where women will typically approach men, I just want to point out that if you want to learn my best ever techniques for instantly attracting women as soon as you start interacting with them and then making them feel connected with you and want to go to the next level with you such as a phone number, kiss, sex that night or a phone number and set up a date then I recommend that you read my ebook The Flow or listen to the audiobook version. The Flow is what I created and used to enjoy my choice of women for over 10 years. I enjoyed being with lots of women, I sometimes stopped to have a girlfriend, but for a lot of the time I was dating multiple women at once. Then when I was ready, I settled down with my perfect woman and I've been with her ever since. The flow makes it so easy for you to go from one step to the next with a woman. It's the easiest way to get laid or get a girlfriend. So the final one on the list is language exchange events. Just type in language exchange event near me and if there's one in your city or town, it means that both men and women are going to be going to those events and they want to practice another language. So what happens is that women who go there are more willing to walk up and say what they know how to say in the particular language and get a conversation going with you. So the next time you're in one of those situations, make sure that you're ready to have an interaction with the woman. Make her feel attracted, bring some sexual energy into the interaction and move things forward.